Time for the next one. And now actually it's getting really interesting. So, so the last one we looked at was compose P uh, or compose promise. And of course we also looked at pipe promise. So compose promise and pipe promise. The next one, however, is concat. And, and the reason I say this is interesting is not because concatenation is very interesting, but because concatenation is this very general idea. And, and we'll actually look into this, what happens here when, when, it, when they say that concat can also concatenate two members of a fantasy land compatible semi-group. So category theory. <laughs> Anyways, let's start by reading the definition. So the definition says that concat returns the result of concatenating the given lists or strings. Okay, so it can concatenate either lists or it can concat can concatenate strings, which we can also see here if we look at the type definitions, right? Like either you pass it a list of A's and then a list of A's, and then you get back a list of A's, right? Where A is any type. Or you pass it a string and then a string, and then you get back a string. So it can concatenate two strings or it can concatenate two arrays. And, okay, let's read this note here. So note, r.concat expects both arguments to be of the same type, unlike the native array.prototype.concat method. It will throw an error if you concat an array with a non-array value. So I assume, let's actually check that out. Like I assume if we jump in the node that the native JavaScript concat, let's, let's just say if we have the array of one, two, three, and we try to concat that with the array of four, five, six, that works. But they're saying, well, you can actually concatenate other stuff. Yeah, so that works, right? So, so, so the native JavaScript, JavaScript is so funny, man. So, so the native JavaScript concat function says that, okay, if you try to concat if you try to concat the string foo into the array one, two, three, you actually get one, two, three, foo. So similarly, I assume we could do it the other way, right? We could say, what if you have foo and you try to concat one, two, three? Can you do that? Yeah, and then you get a string foo with one, two, three punched into that string. So yeah, they're saying that maybe we should be aware of these scenarios. Maybe if these things happen, they're probably unintended. So let's just throw an error instead. So so let's make sure that the types align. So so yeah, that's a note. And then this uh, last thing is that they're saying that concat also dispatches to the concat method of the first argument if present. So that means it can also concatenate two members of a fantasy land compatible semi-group. And I think that's the thing we should look at, but let's just make sure that we understand concat first. I mean, we just looked at the native concat, so let's now look at our concat. So, so r.concat of, let's say, one, two, three, uh, with four, five, six, uh, like so, right? And then let's console log that, like, up, oh, like so. Let's just run that, and we see we get one, two, three, four, five, six in, in one array. Right? And similarly, we can concat, let's say two strings. So foo, we concat with bar. Let's run that. We see we get foo bar as a single string out. And I would assume then that because they're explicitly saying here one array and then another array and then we get back an array or uh, a string and then another string and we get back a string. So I assume that because they're saying that, they're, they're, they're implying that it's not a, a variadic function. So I'm not sure actually, let's look at native concat. Like if we have one, two, three, can we concat first the array of four, but also the array of five? Yes, actually you can do that. So this is variadic, right? Yeah. Seven, eight, nine. You see, we can just keep on adding arguments to the concat. We don't have to do several concats in a row. Like we don't have to pipe it through multiple concats. We don't have to compose. But but with Ramda, some things are variadic, some other things are not variadic. So sometimes it's consistent with sort of the base library, sometimes not. So so concat here is not because if we try to add foo, bar, and baz, I think it won't work, right? We still Right, it doesn't. So we still get foobar, not foobar baz. And similarly here, I mean, if we try to add seven here, it's not gonna work. I mean, or I mean, essentially we get one, two, three, four, five, six, but we don't get including seven. So if we would want to have that, we would have to compose. We would have to say, yeah, we would have to say r dot r dot pipe, and then we would concat one, and then we would concat the other one. But let's not think about that now. But anyway, so so, so you can only pass two arguments, and this, I, I mean, I guess you can probably see how it works. It's normal concatenation. This thing can be this thing can be partially applied, of course, because it's it's curried. So so we could say. So this is a pretty useless function, but let's say add four, five, six, which is a function that concats. Uh, one or four, five, six. But of course, it's actually it, it actually prepends 
four, five, six, because this is the first argument of, of concat, or like we've partially applied the first argument of concat. Like if you if you try this out, right? Like if we say console log add four, five, six to the array of one, two, two, three, we'll probably get four, five, six, one, two, three, and the same mistake. And but yeah, four, five, six, one, two, three, right? Because we're prepending because four, five, six here is the first argument to the concat function. So if we wanted to actually add in the end, like append. Uh, we would have to flip the the concat function before we do that, but then we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So so this is cool. I mean, you can you can you can partially apply the concat function because it's auto curried. But I guess the cooler thing is that if you have something that you've defined yourself, which is sort of concatenable. So let's look at this. I mean, so again, it dispatches to the concat method of the first argument if present. Can also concatenate two members of a a fantasy and incompatible semi group. So I assume if we open that up, and let's close this old tab, let's jump over here. I assume, yeah, exactly, that a semi group has to do with concat. So the definition of a semi group is that it needs to specify the concat method. Actually, that seems to be it, right? And then we have this rule where it says that A concatenated with B concatenated with, mis with C. Uh, must be equivalent to A concatenated with B concatenated with C. So, so associativity essentially, right? I mean, associativity is that uh, A plus, or sorry, A plus uh, B plus C needs to be the same thing as uh, as A as A plus B plus C, right? So, A concatenated with the concatenation of B and C needs to be the same thing as A concatenated with B and then concatenated with C. But of course now we said plus, but the point is that, that plus here could be any operator and we're saying that this operator is asso associative if it, if it sort of adheres to this law and concat here is the operator that we're talking about or function that we're talking about in this case. So concat is a fun and uh, let's look at concat then, right? Let's, so concat on this type needs to be a function that if given a semi-group of, ty of type A, oh sorry, if given something of type A, which where A is a semi-group, and then if given something of type A again, I'm not entirely sure what this means, but never mind, then we should get back something of type A. So essentially, concat is uh, a function that when given something of a type where the type is a semi-group and then when given another thing of that type then it it can produce a new thing of, of, of those types and this sounds totally cryptic but I mean if you think about it th th that's like array right so so concat on an array once so if we do one two three concat that with four uh, four five six right like like so so array is a semi-group if I'm not mistaken, I mean category theorists. I apologize if I'm messing this up, but but array is a semi-group because if you have one, two, three, then then you can concat that with another semi-group. So concat is a function. Yeah, I don't have to retype this. I mean concat. Sorry about the uh, font size, by the way. So concat is a function that when given an A and an A produces a new A. So concat is a function that when given one array and another array produces, I mean, think about this, what this produces is one, two, three, four, five, six. Like it doesn't produce an array of two arrays. It actually produces a single array. Like it produces a new semi-group. Or, I'm sorry, not a new group, but, but a new instance of that, of, of that semi-group. So what we're saying is that we can have something which is concatenable. And let's just think about this. What would that, what would that mean? Let's, let's define something which is concatenable. Um, I believe I had an interesting example in mind when I thought about this before, but I've totally forgotten that now. So let's just do something silly. So let's concatenate stars or something like that. I mean, that's like string concatenation, but it's like we have a very specific type that is only stars. So let's say that we have this thing called a star and let's treat it as a constructor. And then let's say that on the prototype of star, we can say, no, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so actually I'm not coming up with any good examples. So let's just re-implement string. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this, but but let's 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 do it this way. Let's let's say that we had a type called string and let's treat that as a constructor where we pass some string in here and then we set the internal value uh, 
str, let's say, to, to this string. And then uh, let's say that, so star, why did I say star? Sorry, I was thinking about stars before, so string. Okay, but uh, yeah, of course we can't call it string. Let's call it str. I mean, we can actually call it string, but let's call it str. So let's, let's say that we have this str, and then let's add a function to the prototype here, prototype. Uh, that we call essentially concat, right? Because we're trying to say, what if we had a concat function? And this concat is a function that when given another thing of a string type, so actually maybe I should avoid calling this str here, maybe we should call it, so let's call it value instead, right? Because value is like a raw literal string. And when I say str, I mean something of type str of, of type str of this type str that we've built what we want to do then is we want to say well this value should now be uh, the old value plus the plus the string that we were passed in but of course uh, sorry this doesn't make any sense we want to produce a new type so we want to say return when we say concat we return a new str where the new str has this value concatenated with the the value of the str that we were passed in so we're creating a new string so so let's let's look at that let's just see if that yeah, that works and then let's say console log uh, new let's just say we have a new string or actually let's let's say so const s1 is a new str of uh, hello uh, foo right and then let's console log s1 so we can see that we have an object whose value is foo now, okay? And then let's say that we have s2, which is a bar, and then let's just make sure that this works. So we say, we console log that, and then we see that we have the first object which contains foo and the second object which contains bar. Okay, so let's now try to concat these. So let's say s3 is s1 concatted with s2. And then let's look at, let's log S3 and let's see what happens. Then we can see we have a new <laughs> string which has the value foobar. Importantly, they're immutable, right? So if we, after we've concat, yeah, so, so think about this, right? Where we are console logging after we have done the concatenation. So we're not actually mutating S1 nor S2. We are producing a new thing of the str type, and that's the S3. And so the reason we were doing this, if we jump back now, is that we can actually use r.concat. So we're saying that, okay, well, if you have this case where you have this type where you've implemented your own concat function, then you can use r.concat. So we could say, uh, const, let's say, S, or actually, let's just replace this. Instead of, instead of saying what we did, yeah, instead of saying what we did before here, we could say s3 is r.concat s1 and s2. And this should give the same thing, right? And that gives the same thing. So concat, Ramda concat dispatches to our native concat. And this is the idea or, or one of the ideas of being a semi-group. And actually, if we jump to the source here, to the, to the Ramda source of the concat function, we can probably see where we delegate to concat, exactly. So blah, 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 blah. And here they're saying if the first argument is not null, and if a dot concat, if the property concat on a on, on the argument a is a function, then we should instead invoke concat on a by passing b, right? So, so we call concat on a and pass b, which is again why it behaves the same way as uh, as, as as this thing when we said s1, in other words, a concatted with b. And so this is, if we just close these tabs, this is really back again, sorry, I just keep on saying this, but the power of functional programming and the power of finding this common language category theory that describe the different things. So now, like, it's a very general idea with the semi-groups. And now that you, you, so now you know that, like, anytime you have something which is concatable and it follows the rules of a semi-group, then you will be able to, to pass it to any function that accepts a semi-group. Like that's extremely, extremely reusable. And of course, now this was a bit of a silly example uh, with, this, with a string type. We could probably have, have implemented something like a non-empty list, for example. Or perhaps if we think about something which is potentially less esoteric, like let's say you're building like a text editor, like let's say a note-taking application, like for example, Evernote, then you would probably have notes and these notes would probably not just be plain text, but maybe somehow you were working with fragments of a note. So, so you'd have like an image and 
some piece of text or something like that. And then you concatenate these things in order to make up a whole document. So maybe your, your document is like a, a concatenation, like a list of different document pieces. And for some reason, maybe you're not using an array, maybe you're not using a list, but maybe you're using sort of your own type fragment and then you can concatenate these different fragment types and so maybe you could model that a as like a semi-group of course of course there are a bunch of other category theory concepts so it's possible that something else might be more suitable so one image that I tend to consult a lot or one table that I tend to consult a lot is for example if we go to the Wikipedia page of semi-group and, and usually you can do this for for uh, most sort of uh, algebraic structures in, in category theory uh, and then we scroll down you can see we find this somewhere here, this particular uh, table where, where, where it's like a, a, a categorization of, of different group-like structures. So for example, monoids I've actually used uh, usefully in, in, in code, uh, and now we're talking about semi-groups, but then, then you can actually com compare like what's the difference between a semi-group and a monoid. So, so a to totality is for example required in both a semi-group and a monoid, associativity as we talked about is required in, in a semi-group and a monoid. However, identity, the existence of an identity element over this operation does not have to exist in a semi-group, but it does have to exist in a monoid. So if you think about uh, addition, for example, ad addition over integers, then then zero is the identity over addition. So so addition then forms a monoid. Again, apologies if I'm incorrect about this, but it, it's kind of, it makes sense, right? Uh, whereas it's probably, I mean, in some sense, of course, then it's also a semi-group, right? Because we don't need the identity, but it's fine if you have it. But if you have something which doesn't have identity, then, then that maybe forms a semi-group, but not a monoid. And, and actually, I mean, if you think about it, so I guess then actually all monoids are semi-groups, but now I'm on dangerous territory. But like strings would also be a monoid because the empty string is, is, the, is the identity. And actually, like, let's just figure out what's totality here. So totality, ah, right, okay. So, right, I mean, it's like, if we look at partial function versus to total function, like a partial function does not force the function f to map every element of x here to an element of y here. So, so in other words, I guess we could think of it as like in a partial function, there can exist values in X in the input domain or in the input set that doesn't map to anything in the output set. So the function is not defined for some input values. I guess that's the point, right? But, but essentially, if the function is defined for every possible input value, then that's a total function. So I guess maybe you could think of it as like throwing an exception. Like if your function throws an exception on the basis of invalid output, or sorry, invalid input, then it's pr we could probably usefully think of that as partial. Maybe I'm completely wrong. <laughs> but but let's let's drop this before it gets any more crazy. But, the, but this table I find extremely useful in order to try to think about these sort of different ideas such as semi-group and monoid and all that. So back to concat, right? Let's wrap this up. If you have two arrays, you can concatenate them into a third array or into a new array. If you have two strings, you can concatenate them into a single string. And if you have something which is a semi-group, so if you have something that you've constructed yourself, which you know is concatable because you've defined concat, then you can pass that to concat and co construct a new thing out of two other things. Or you can merge two things into in, into one thing without destroying the original two things, but you simply just create a new thing, which is the concatenation of the two other things. Whew, okay, <laughs> let's, let's remove this code and let's get on to the next one.